basically, I've always been passionate about building people, mm. skills, brands, companies in emerging markets. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Advertising in Africa with me, Delio Dugemi. Today, we will be talking about what it takes to run advertising campaigns on a pan africa basis. And for that topic, I have no other person joining me than the person who taught me the trade I currently have, Sharon Penorik. Welcome, Sharon. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for the honor of being on your show. It's been I must compliment you on having a very successful show with fantastic speakers and very relevant topics. Thank you for that. It's been a long journey and you kind of started it when you urged me to um, do a podcast on this. I'm actually really quite happy that you are on the opposite side of me now trying to share the knowledge we've picked up across Africa. So f let me first attempt uh, a background of Sharon and then also let her chip in the parts that I missed. The biggest compliment I can give Sharon is really that she taught me everything I know. And she could do that because she's had the opportunity to have traveled the continent in different roles for different agencies and working on tremendous clients. And that was a, a pioneering job at the time. If you look back, Sharon, that at the time it wasn't like there was a template for how to travel Africa or how to run the type of campaign we'll later discuss. So that you were one of the pioneers who moved <laughs> into into Africa. And I know I'm putting you on the spot in terms of yeah. that introduction, but it's true. It was that at that time, and I'm looking at me doing it like a couple of years later and how much of a challenge yes. it must have been for you at the time. So perhaps you just want to share that background with us, Sharon. Well, thank you for that. It's been quite a ride. I started... A long, long time ago, and the only constant is change, and you've seen how it's Indeed. evolved every which way. In the good old days, we didn't even have the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and can you think about the world without that? I can't. We had to I can't. Responses between countries. <laughs> and, um, but basically, I've always been passionate about building people, mm. skills, brands, companies in emerging markets and taking cognizance of the local answers, insights in each market. And what led me to that is uh, I've got a psychology degree and whilst studying psychology, uh, I was so interested in, in the mindsets of everyone. I got a job in advertising and realized that it was the right game for me because psychology is key mm. in understanding the consumer yeah. and their different habits, yeah. which we do need to understand the different markets because none of us is the same. Mm. And with the dual interview, so I will <laughs> hand over to you. No problem. Thanks for, but thanks for sharing the background. It's actually a good starting point because I think what, you know, the, the last part of your statement kind of alluded to is the complexity of Africa. And, you know, it's often stated more like geographically, you know, 54 independent states, multiple languages and all of that, multiple cultures. So it's clear that it must be a different assignment or maybe difficult assignment. So, uh, you know, for, you know, what we're trying to share today, which is about learnings we've had about developing and managing a Pan-Africa campaign. So the complexity of the continent then therefore comes to bear of as we say it, the, the multiple dimensions, language, dynamics, and, and geographical challenges. So is it really possible to run a Pan-Africa campaign? I think that's really the starting point. In your view, your experience, is it really Pan-Africa or is it multiple campaigns running in different parts of Africa? How do we really classify it? Well, that's an interesting one hmm. because... Basically, you use the word complex, mm. and it is complicated, as that movie you've seen. <laughs> um, and it can, it depends on the client. Actually, knowing me and my alliterations, mm -hmm. it is possible to do it pan-regionally yeah. or north, south, east, west 
or francophone, anglophone, uh, lucophone. And it depends on the clients, but it depends on 10 key C's. Mm-hmm. Well, my alliteration is the C. The only constant is change. Mm-hmm. And one has to think through and understand the 10 C's of running continental campaigns. Okay. For countries, yeah. no market is the same as, and as in, in Asia, and I've also worked in emerging markets in Asia, Vietnam is very different from China. So it's the same across Africa. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a global problem. It's not only a pan-African challenge. Yeah. Now talk about challenges because with all challenges, one has solutions. Sure. So I'll go through the, the 10 C's, mm-hmm. but we won't have time. We need uh, a podcast yeah. for each one of them. Yeah. And then I'll just focus on the key points yep. that we should get across here to the Pan Africa. So the one is the countries, one C, the what, second one is the clients yep. and how they're structured and their distribution and their briefing. Importantly, their briefing, mm-hmm. because sometimes you get a, a brief for Africa or as a country, yep. as you know, competitive activity, the consumers. Mm-hmm. And everything related to the consumer, data, research, insights, connections, communication channels. Now, just think of the communication channels since I started some in the 1990s. I mean, now there's a kaleidoscope of new channels from above the line, through the line, below the line, digital, social, podcasts, like this one. We can count. And the challenge there is that the more mature specialists mm-hmm. in the game, all marketers and advertising agencies and media owners, the more mature ones who are used to conventional cannot are bedazzled by digital and social. They can't grasp it as a total paradigm shift. Mm. And then the younger specialists, understand digital and social and influences and podcasts and TikTok and everything. Yeah. But they don't understand or haven't experienced the conventional media. So the communication channel is a huge and the expertise yeah. is very important. Mm. And communication, as you know, the medium is a message. We've spoken about language, costs, currency, pricing, then nine is control. Where's the control from? From which region? Mm-hmm. As you said. And coordination. How do you coordinate? Is it possible? And finally, and it's been covered very well in some of your other podcasts, is mm-hmm. COVID and the impact of COVID on everything. Yeah. So if you don't mind, I would like to focus on four key areas okay. today. That if we can talk about how to counteract it and what those issues are, which is the client briefing, yeah. the consumer, the research, and importantly, insights mm-hmm. and going to the markets, mm-hmm. the control in terms of monetary and a touch on it, the competencies of all the stakeholders. Please go so ahead. So that's okay with you. That is now, perfect. Go forward. That is for me. Those are really, I didn't even know we we're going to go all the way through to 10. But that's just about when I was describing as complex, I meant it in this dimension of this. And if we could just maybe touch on this four and maybe another time we could develop on the other six as well. That would be great. This four will do just fine because that's, to my mind, the logistics, i.e. the carrying it out. For that to happen, you need to scale this four in the very least. So this is almost like a minimum uh, a requirement. So please go ahead. Yes. Okay, so the first is the client briefing. And, you know, you get some sophisticated clients who yeah. do it very well. Yeah. So we must not forget that. Mm-hmm. Um, but we get briefs. Now, it depends where Pan-Africa can be run from Dubai or can be run from France yeah. or America or the UK yeah. or from South Africa or for West Africa from Nigeria. So it depends where it's run from and the understanding of those clients of the other markets that they're covering. So all too often we receive briefs that determine and prescribe the communication channels Mm. without liaising with the 
markets on the ground. Well, they say this is a TV driven campaign or print driven campaign mm-hmm. without regard to the consumption in each individual country and the perception of different mediums. And I worked on uh, a carbonated soft drink. And there was one, like in Mauritius, it had 100% TV coverage. Okay. Where in another smaller market, radio was a key medium. And in another island, um, outdoor was the only medium available. So you can't say, oh, we're going to use TV across the continent. Sure. So it's very important to get local input from everyone. For example, Tanzania. Yeah. Has a very vibrant print communication channel sector with both morning and afternoon papers. And the highest circulating print title is a sports newspaper. Huh. Whilst in East Africa and Uganda, the print sector had very low circulation with the highest circulation paper being a gossip and theme publication. Huh. Now, therefore, and that was all done in Kiswahili. Yeah. Therefore, there should be flexibility built in the plans to accommodate the local market strengths of the medium. The other thing is Kiswahili is a different dialect in uh, Tanzania versus Kenya. Yeah. So, and it doesn't work because it's pure. It's a pure Kiswahili in Tanzania. Mm. So one has to be very careful with that. The other thing, and we all experienced it from wherever it's driven, is the arrogance of high GDP markets with higher ad spends to smaller markets and making assumptions. As you know, we always say, assume, if you break it down, it makes an ASS of mm-hmm. you and me. I don't know if you can use yeah, that in podcast. Well, we can. We're in a podcast. It's not radio. Okay. All right. So, clients prioritize brands giving priority to the bigger markets and they tend to oversee the category dynamics of each market and they just investigate the size of the market so the big markets and the reasons for that tend to get a bigger chunk of the budget and the smaller markets get lower budget but to the same expectation as the bigger market the justification for that to cut in sharon is basically that you kind of expect media in the smaller markets to be cheaper relatively. So that, that yes. almost becomes the basis of the weight distribution, if you like. Did you find that to be true? It's true, but not in all markets. Okay. And also some of the markets deal in dollars and the exchange rate is a big factor. True. Um, and also they deal in exposure levels or GRPs, and as you know, something I'm going to touch on under the consumer and research or lack thereof, mm-hmm. of how they have GRP levels or rating levels per medium, and it's not measured in all the markets. Mm-hmm. So, yes, there's a reason for that, and pricing can be cheaper, but one needs to work with the markets to understand what deliveries are, not just assume. Yeah. And the other thing is what I call magnification. And this is driven by procurement, and procurement's a key issue when it comes to pan-African strategy. Yeah. Is where a strategy is, a campaign is force-fit, where it works in a few markets, you just force-fit into another market, and is usually led by procurement in terms of cost per thousands, cost per rating points, cost per GRP, negotiation, discounts, and fees on the ground. Mm. And they forget the local platforms that really matter. And, and also, as I say, yes, the solution is they need to work, involve briefing with the agencies on the ground, mm. with their teams on the ground. And like we've experienced, and it's happened to the best of us, and yeah. we still do to the best of us, mm. the creation is templated. <laughs> where markets would be asked to fill in details based on available inventories for communication channel set by the regional team. Yeah. Now, we can understand why it's done because if you're doing a campaign, I worked on a, a software drink across 46 markets, 
Mm. How do you get the same insights and the same rationale from each of the markets? You can't visit them all. Yeah. So you need to ask some of the questions and you expect, and after working with everybody, you can, they can ask them to complete these uh, formats, which I think on the ground, I've also worked on the ground because I lived in different markets in Africa. Mm-hmm. When you receive these templates and you think, oh no. What were they so, thinking? But, a, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the coordination of it, it's amazing what you get when you look through it and yeah. you ask why, well, it, as you know. Yeah. So, yes and no, if you work on, on the ground. So, one of the solutions, well, one needs training of, of clients, mm-hmm. of the agencies, of creative, all to work together mm-hmm. and elevate the media function as a professional thorough discipline. We have to go through a whole process. We think of things, think across the, the 10 C's as a start. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't just put as communication specialists, we don't just put crosses on schedules. We've got to think through it. Mm. And importantly, local teams in the planning process, we need to involve them for creative and not bring them in on the tail end. Yeah. So communication is key. And we need to ensure that there's a different executions for different markets, but to the same central idea. Mm. This sorts out the cultural context issues and, and languages. And that's just, you know, the, you can have a session of how to brief, which a lot of us do. But the more you work with clients, the more you have an understanding, the more you go through that process. So, yes, you asked me about, is it pan African regional what well, depends <laughs> and uh, however uh, you do it mm-hmm. all the markets must be involved in the client in the process in the client brief yeah where one looks so back, that's briefing yeah that's briefing but i wanted to take uh, just a little uh, question on that more to build on it um now at the time it was seem looking back that there were challenges we had about the fact that the briefing comes and we need to reach out to our teams in the market who then need to provide information either through the templates we create and so on. But at the time, we're limited by the technology that was available. Fast forward yes. to 2022, when we can now have group team meetings. Yes. And, you know, I would feel that coordination in this day and age would be a lot easier than at the time when we we started just looking back. So I just wanted to build on what you just shared, that what has happened with time is technology has now even made that a lot more accessible, I suppose, and the challenges we've experienced back then is now beginning to go away. Yeah, that's a very good point because you have Zoom meetings, you have all the... That's the other thing, the briefing, you can have all the markets Mm. at the briefing and you can talk to the markets and talk about everything and come up with solutions Yes, I mean, that is absolutely... It's it eliminated makes a huge the difference. bottleneck, yeah, because the feedback is immediate. Yes, the, yeah, and very so the, much that, so. Yeah, so the, and you put people in that group, which we just really couldn't do before. So you had to have individual conversations. So in the 40-plus market, for example, you had to had 40 calls or 40-plus calls yes. and all of that. And that was yes. just really physically demanding. And nowadays that we now have yes, a tool that is so. more collaborative. So coordination is beginning to now, when you make it like a hub and spoke structure, technology makes it easier to happen. So I just very wanted to build, so. build an idea. We involve clients from the start, as should, so that the briefing process is a lot easier. So sorry to cut in. Just wanted to build on what you stated there. Yeah, excellent point. And so true. Makes a big difference. But the key is that you get the inputs a briefing from uh, the clients should liaise with everyone on the ground to make sure that the brief will allow the media spe- or communicate. I prefer to say communication channel specialists than the media. media. Yeah. I, yeah, because yeah, media so. implies conventional media. So, so we're talking across the board because everything communicates. Absolutely. So that's briefly the brief. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, I'd like to next 
the consumer is key to the whole communication process mm -hmm. and needs your topic in terms of insights. Importantly, for all campaigns, we need to go, we can talk about all beautiful technology and podcasts and TikTok and Facebook and, op and being creative within each medium, but we still need to go to the basics of doing a communication channel strategy. And the basics are intimately understanding the brand and its competitors, the key marketing and advertising objectives, regionality, distribution, areas of strength and weakness. Do you upgrade areas of strength or weakness? Seasonality of timing. Do we upgrade high seasons or lower seasons, etc. with regard to timing? And importantly, the consumer to understand the target market. Who are we talking to and not at? Many a time we talk at markets, at individuals, at people and not to. We need to understand the consumers better, who they are, where they are and what they are doing. Mm. When are they most receptive to the message and not to think? How often are we meeting and we recommend a medium or a magazine or a newspaper or a TV program? Because the spouse reads it or the child reads it or watches it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So we need to be allowed to be objective, intimately understanding who the consumer is. We also need to touch consumers in new and innovative ways and use multiple media to deliver messages. Fragmented attention needs linked messages across channels, conventional, digital, and social. I mean, just think of the different formats of TV versus radio versus visual on Instagram or on Facebook and the different visual and audio on TikTok. Okay. We need to go beyond demographics and understand people and how it differs per market. Touch points. It's not about the media. It's not about the channels. It's about a contact points, a make it or break situation. You could go to a chicken outlet and eat, have eaten their chicken for years and you go and have one bad experience with the chickens off and you go and complain. And it depends how they interact with you. Uh -huh. If they react positively, you'll go back and you'll feel good about it. If they react Badly and defensively, you'll never go back again. Now, to understand all of that, one needs good data and research. And yes, there is some research, consumer research and data, but there's a lack of consistent, accurate, robust, comparative research across all markets. I'm a founding member of PAMRO uh -huh. and has influenced communication channels consumption research across the continent. Most countries have different research parameters, different research intervals, and even different ways of classifying audience. Some use SEMs, some use LSMs, some use socioeconomic groups. So it's hard to set GRP levels as appear for each market. So it has to be assessed on a country to country basis. And we need to think pan African or globally, but act locally. And this is done through either market research, informal research, and importantly, market visits, liaising with all stakeholders. So that would be customers, the trade, formal and informal trades, mm. the media owners, the monitoring services, the clients. Going to the clients, when you go on a visit, you've mm. asked me about uh, – visiting the markets and learnings. Yeah. It's important to spend time with the clients, going into their offices, going to their factories, experiencing the production, mm. talking to the market team. What I found very beneficial is, I don't know if you've heard of route riding with a soft drink company when I was taking Lagos on the big trucks mm -hmm. and delivered crates of the beverage to all the customers and going around, talking to the customers, to the clients, mm. 
and sadly they're all still waiting for Sharon to, to supply coolers. <laughs> <laughs> so you followed pretty much the distribution channel, which is yeah. a, a way to learn the route to market and yeah. which would then, you know, maybe reflect on the strategy that you didn't have. Importance of in, insight. The key challenge is these insights mm. and how you do it. What is an insight? Mm. An insight is a piece of understanding that can be used to springboard one's thinking. Often a good test of an insight is whether it answers the question why. Mm. So you get an insight by understanding why competitors advertising where they do or why consumers buying a competitive product or why a sales peak happens at a particular time of the year. Insights are basic human truths mm. about the category or the target audience. For instance, understanding why a consumer would use an antacid after a meal, yeah. which is a human truth for some people. Mm. At what time do you have, have that message? Mm-hmm. Around meal times? Is it at lunch time? Is it dinner time? Before or after? This also informs you when you should look at different options. If it's after meal time or dinner, mm-hmm. is it TV? Do they go on Facebook online? Or have a look at the restaurant outlets or fast food outlets as media channels. So that's an insight mm-hmm. to ask the question why. Yeah. It also affects importantly creative and this affects cuisine, religion and dress. Both cult, dress, both culturally and climate related. And one has to be careful of taboos. I mean, years ago, there was a campaign of someone pouring tea mm-hmm. uh, in a commercial with their left hand. And it was North Africa, Middle East. Mm-hmm. So very Islamic culture driven. Yeah. But the big problem with that. And why it was a huge failure is usually, and not to be too crude, that the ha- that hand, the left hand, is used when going to the toilet. Yeah, so, it's so that's how you can get it very wrong. Mm-hmm. So you need the insight. Yeah. And with all the different insights from a creative point of view, mm-hmm. one has to look for common ground, not exceptionalism. Look for what is similar. Yeah. And you know it helps. But you must be careful not looking at the lowest common denominator mm-hmm. because there's a beer in Asia. I don't know if you know the Tiger beer. Tiger, yeah. Years ago. And they came up with a line, it's called to be Asian. Mm-hmm. And was exported, the creative, across Asia. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't well received because... You know, Asian populations covered Turkey to Japan, Mongolia, mm. Pakistan, the Philippines. And no Asian identified themselves in any way, meaningful way, as Asian with that campaign. Mm. From a pan-African perspective, it could be interesting. It's cool to be African. But when one's talk about soccer, <laughs> <laughs> it becomes, a, you know, don't mention the war, don't mention the soccer, especially yeah. when you talk about the super eagles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those ones. Um, and then from a, sorry. No, sorry, I was just going to chip in that it's very tough to find the common ground as you've shared yes. with the Asian experience and in the African case, the multiple religion, the multiple cultures, even to sports that could have been a unifier. No doubt that soccer is quite big, but then you find that not to be true in every market. And basketball is yes. big in Angola, for example. Yes, uh, um, so, very true. Yeah, so it's hardly ever that one would fit all. As, as you've stated, it certainly isn't true in Asia, and we are finding that not to be true in Africa, which means the more you know about each local market, the closer you are to the consumers. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. And another example, in Kenya, we had a, an ad for cooking oil that showed a mother in the kitchen preparing a meal for her, her family. Mm. And one of the, her children comes in and cheekily takes it to party she has just cooked and makes off with it. Mm. But the ad bombed. Why? In Uganda. Mm-hmm. We're talking about East Africa because yeah. the mother was wearing a headscarf. Okay. And the Ugandans only wear headscarves when they are mourning. 
oh. uh, bombed in Tanzania because they deemed the behavior of the child to be extremely rude, <laughs> and therefore the mother was not a good mother. <laughs> so that's another example. Yeah. Language. We know that local languages resonate better with audience. Mm-hmm. Yet, in the interest of economies of scale, organizations use international or national languages to communicate, mm-hmm. which brings us to translations. A communication conceived in one language loses something when translated to another. Mm-hmm. Lost in translation. Yeah, it's lost. That's very true. Mm-hmm. And also things like word plays, puns, copy based. Humor might not translate well linguistically or culturally too. Yeah. And we know that there's slang and pidgin and ching and all in different markets. And importantly, one needs to use those depending on your target market. Let's think of now from a product point of view uh, in terms of insights. During COVID in one market, a headache powder started uh, selling powder as mm-hmm. cocaine. So it's a huge problem for that headache powder manufacturer. So they had to stop, they had to be removed from retail stores. Wow. They're smuggling across borders. There are different names for products like Panadol and Panada. Okay. Back to school campaigns. When are the school terms? They differ per market. And when should you have campaigns? Repurposing of products. You know, some disinfectants are used as to dispel bad spirits. Mm-hmm. Or a tub of margarine can be used to keep other products in the kitchen. But we're talking about soccer and in- content insights. We know that soccer, soccer is a religion of Africa. It's amazing how it drives a subscription up yep. for DSTV, DSTV during the EPL, Mm -hmm. but music is exceptionally important in terms of a local level, local musicians and concerts on the ground, but you must get local people and some of the local musicians become influencers and brand ambassadors. Absolutely. And there's a need, as there's a need for more localization, there's also a sense of correctness across the continent. I came across fantastic research, but in summary, it was across 14 markets showing the rising Afro optimism mm. amongst the continent's youth. Yeah. I mean, let's face it, the youth is more than 50, represent they, more than 50% they, they drive the of the population yes. across Africa. They drive the continent, yes, absolutely. They drive a strong sense of individuality and responsibility. Mm-hmm. They believe that Wi Fi access should be in a basic human right. Mm-hmm. They identify the threat of fake news. They've been affected by COVID. And we understand what content is working across Africa. Yeah. A lot of it is inclusive for the hope of fame and fortune. Pan African formats that do work well, one can capitalize on, mm-hmm. is The Voice, yep. Coke Studio, yeah. Big Brother, yeah. and off different screens as well. Yeah, uh, TV, uh, computer, uh, all the screens, the yes. mobile phone as well. So, yes. so, because we've described it very eloquently in terms of how difficult it is to put together and the elements, you know, broken down. But now as a summary, like that's what it is. That's what it takes to put it together. And now that we are where we are, we're in 2022, we're thinking of a post COVID world, you know, all that difficulty. Now that there's more technology, there's more expansion of opportunities how Pan-African opportunities will more than likely run better now versus our, when we were doing this earlier. I think as a comparison, so what's yes. more difficult, I think is the story of the past, yes. and which you've explained very well. And that, But now where we are, it, there are more tools to make it work better because there's interaction, there's a deeper dive, there are more tools for research and, you know, and so on. As, and as the as communication's easier. Easier, with, uh, correct. That's our technology and with, Correct. With Zoom and it's positive. Exactly. And campaigns work very well where the marketing, creative and communication channel strategy efforts are developed centrally mm-hmm. for consistency mm-hmm. to ensure that you keep the same USP and the same DNA of the brand. Yeah. But then localized across all markets and have input 
from the markets on the ground in terms of both creative and communication channels. Absolutely. Well, like I said, uh, we couldn't have asked for a better person to help us to mend that through this very difficult topic or because it, it can only come from experience. Yes. It, it, and in how you've shared it, you've been able to let, you know, the audience realize what journey it is. Now, us as audience, we just receive the material or we get impacted by the material, but that the back room <laughs> towards putting it out there, the briefing, the consumer insights, the coordination of the process, the logistics of getting the right language and the right, you know, radio station or the right TV station is quite enormous, which as we've then alluded to, technology has now maybe helped make easier. So I suppose the answer to the question asked is Pan-African campaigns are possible. They yes, just very are, much so. They're just a bit of a pain to execute, but that technology has made it better. But experience, particularly the, I think the more one takes the homework part of the assignment, but I mean the briefing, the insight, the more time we devote to that, I think the better the quality of the work that becomes the output because yes, sometimes you, you get put under that kind of pressure because of campaign deadlines and all and then you skip that process because you think you already know your channels and then you just deploy because you think like look we ran this campaign last year we know what the channels are but the audience could have moved if you don't make the effort to find out what the audience now currently do uh, and what they use and how they use it so that you can then fit your campaign into a problem. So it's an ever changing goalpost, you know. Yes, it is. It's you evolving as we speak. Yeah. You must always track and being able to track gives you that ability to be able to deploy in a way that makes your campaign successful. So the framework will always be the same, but the technology yes. would ease maybe distribution or access or ability to generate information, as we said about maybe Zoom, the video conferencing, and so on. That's just really quite a unique thing. I think a major addition to a coordination Very process so. is a major addition to it. So, Sharon, I'd like to thank you for sharing all these insights with us. It's been a great nearly an hour of, well. <laughs> <laughs> of putting all this together. We initially thought it would be a 30-minute session, but there was so much to share and really like to thank you for putting so much into i know we even didn't have time for all you've prepared for yes i, I, I realized we did so certainly it's something we have to do again as a build on this that is a promise from me so i will be harassing you on that later but first i'd like to thank you for making time today to i think this has been quite you know a very deep insight into what it takes to run a pan-africa campaign and I look forward to uh, future sessions that will let us build on that. Well, thank you very much, uh, Jelly, for the opportunity. And we know that you up and coming influencer with your podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> look, uh, Let's see how far we can take well. that. Thank you so much. Thank, yes. thank you so much for the endorsement. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to catching up with you again. If anyone wants to get in touch with you, Sharon, your LinkedIn profile, how would they search for you? Okay, the best way is uh, Sharon Pinhorik. Yeah. It's at Bizwiser. So oh, yeah. Okay, cool. www.bizwiser.co.za And we are, my address is Sharon at Bizwiser.co.za And LinkedIn is under Sharon Pinhorik. Great. And anyone that wants to reach me can reach me on LinkedIn as Delio Dubemi. Thank you again, Sharon. This has been wonderful. So enjoy the rest of your day then. Thank you very much. Enjoy yours. We'll chat soon. Ciao. Thank you. Bye.